Today I pulled out a very special recipe for Father's Day. My dad is a major ketchup fan, so I've decided to bake a very special tomato and cheddar pie for him. Sounds yum, right? I can't wait to get started. Making pie crusts at home can seem really intimidating, but it's actually very simple. I'm using a food processor here because I find that cutting butter into the flour by hand in this crazy heat in India can make the butter melt. So I just find it easier to do this in the food processor. I've got flour, baking soda and baking powder and I'm just adding half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to pulse it together before I add chilled butter straight from the refrigerator. Just pulse it together a few times so that it gets all mixed up together. When you're making pie crust at home, just remember to keep everything really chilled and pull the butter out of the refrigerator only when you're ready to put it in the food processor. Just, I've cut it up in cubes and I'm distributing it evenly. I'm just going to pulse the butter and the flour together till the whole mixture looks like wet sand. So now this looks like wet sand. What it really means is that some of the butter is the size of oat flakes, some of them are really tiny pieces, but it's all got mixed together with the flour. I've pulled out the buttermilk from the refrigerator only when I need it. I'm going to add about between half to three quarter cup of buttermilk. It depends on how soon the dough starts to come together. I'm just going to put the dough here and just gently shape it into a disc. There's no need to knead it. This is not a yeasted dough and we're not really making atta for rotis. So just generally, I'm just gently shape it into a disc and wrap it in cling film. Just wrap this up tightly because this dude needs to chill out in the refrigerator for at least an hour. I've cored and sliced up about a kilo of tomatoes and laid them out on paper towels and then covered it with paper towels just so that they can rest and drain for about 30 minutes so that I don't have a soggy pie when I finally bake it. I've shredded up some cheddar and I've also grated some parmesan and now I'm going to mix them together. This cheese is just the star of this pie. It makes all the difference. Reserve about a quarter cup of it for topping up the pie. I'm just chopping up some fresh dill to add it to the dressing. Dill has such a strong flavour that it will add another dimension to this pie and it will be a nice antidote to the tanginess of the tomatoes. I'm just quickly chopping up some spring onions, just the dark green parts, add it to the dressing. Now for the dressing, I've got about half a cup of Greek yogurt. If you don't have Greek yogurt at home, just strain some yogurt for about two hours till you get about half a cup of strained yogurt. I'm adding the chopped up spring onions. And now for the fragrant dill. Now I'm adding about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar just a tiny pinch of chili flakes but if you don't like spicy food leave that out half a teaspoon of pepper two teaspoons of sugar because we are dealing with tomatoes here and they can be a little bit too tangy sometimes and of course salt just whisk all of this together it might seem a little thick to start out with but it comes together really well and it seems so creamy this is a great substitute for mayonnaise I've got the dough here, it's been chilling for about an hour. I'm rolling this out into about an 11 inch round. You know, having this heavy duty rolling pin just makes all the rolling much easier. It's really hot here. So just to keep the pie from crumbling, I'm just adding a little bit more flour. If you're going to try to bake this pie in a tart pan, you're going to find that the tomatoes are way too many, the dressing is going to overflow. So just use a regular pie pan and not a tart pan. And that way, a lot more people can eat the pie as well. Or you get a bigger piece of the pie. I'm just going to flour this. Mm. 
just gently settle this crust into the pan. You find that baking is a lot easier when you treat your ingredients gently and nicely. I'm just cutting off the extra overhanging edges because I'm going to crimp the edges later. Since it's really warm here, I'm going to chill the pie for about 15 minutes in the refrigerator before I start filling it up. I've got the oven preheating to 220 degrees Celsius and now I'm going to start layering the pie. I'm going to sprinkle about one and a half tablespoons of semolina. You can use cornmeal if you have that at home. I just happen to have lots of semolina lying around. Great. Now I'm going to add half a cup of the cheese mixture. Just spread it out and one third of the tomatoes. This is a little technical, but it's so worth the effort. Lay out the tomatoes, make sure none of the paper towel is stuck to it. Half of the yogurt. Just spread this out. I just want all of this covered with the yogurt mixture. Now I'm going to mix one cup of the cheese mixture. And now layer on half of the remaining tomatoes. And now I'm sprinkling on the remaining cheese, spreading out all of the remaining yogurt. Sprinkling the remaining cheese, not the quarter cup that we had reserved. That's going to go on right in the end. Save that for the end. This is just the remaining cheese from the one cup and the half cup that we've been sprinkling. There, that's in. And now the remaining tomatoes. And the last piece of tomato gets a crowning spot. And this is the quarter cup of cheese that we had reserved right in the beginning. I'm sprinkling this on top. This will be the first thing you bite into when you eat this pie. I'm just crimping the edges. You don't really have to do that if you don't feel like it. But I just think it looks really pretty when it's finally baked. This needs to bake for about 40 minutes and will have nice and brown edges by then and the tomatoes would have shrunk considerably. I'm going to let this cool for about an hour before I give it to dad and I really, really hope he likes it. Fingers crossed. <laughs>